Why hello there, long time no see. How are the kids? How about that local football team? Now that we got the small talk out of the way, today we're going to be talking about workflows. There's a brand new best editing workflow for 360 photos. So if you're a casual 360 photographer or you shoot virtual tours professionally, you wanna pay close attention to this video. And the reason I'm making this video is because there's been some not so good news this week from Adobe about Photoshop. Unfortunately, it's looking like Photoshop is not no longer going to be a reliable 360 photo editor and they're going to be discontinuing their 3D mode which was essential for editing 360 photos in Photoshop. So they say as of Photoshop 22.5 released in August 2021, Photoshop's 3D features will be discontinued. 3D features have enjoyed long success within Photoshop over the course of 10 plus years. However, the personal computing industry has recently been transitioning away from use of OpenGL, having to do with specifically the use of GPUs, which is critical for 3D, toward native GPU APIs, which ultimately began the slow deterioration of Photoshop's 3D features, all of which needed OpenGL. As difficult of a decision as removing 3D features from Photoshop is the silver lining is that the next generation of 3D content creation tools from Adobe is already here. Check out the Substance line of 3D products and they link to another page where they have some other softwares and these really are programs that are focused more on 3D rendering and 3D object creation as opposed to 360 photo editing. That makes me a sad panda. So here's how I interpret it. Basically, they were able to make 3D 360 photo editing work within Photoshop and something that everyone has noticed over the last year is that it has slowly become more and more buggy, it freezes, it simply doesn't work sometimes and it's getting to the point where it actually is kind of becoming unusable. So they're acknowledging that and they're basically saying it's a GPU issue, it's not solvable for whatever reason. I'm not going to pretend that I understand GPU APIs and OpenGL because I don't, but it does seem like a legitimate hardware issue as opposed to them consciously distancing themselves from 360 photo editing. So for now that leaves you and me, well, assuming you're actually a Photoshop user with the task of finding a workaround and a brand new workflow. Now I wanna make super clear that this is not a video about what is the best stitching workflow or what is better, a 360 camera or a DSLR. I'm not interested in talking about that right now. Instead, this is a video about the 360 photo editing workflow, meaning color correcting 360 photos and removing imperfections from 360 photos like the tripod or monopod in softwares that are actually friendly of 360 photos. Okay, so the new best 360 photo editing workflow that will now be my default workflow is going to be batch color correcting and HDR merging inside Adobe Lightroom CC, followed by editing out the tripod and other imperfections inside Affinity Photo or Touch Retouch. There's no question Lightroom has been an industry leader when it comes to photo editing, especially when you've got a lot of photos, which you often do if you're shooting 360 photos for a virtual tour. And it means you don't need to subscribe to both Lightroom and Photoshop. In fact, this brand new workflow doesn't need Photoshop at all. I've already color corrected multiple shoots using Lightroom and I love it. Oh, another piece of exciting news is if you're using this camera, the Theta Z1, there is now a standalone stitcher, which I will link down below in the description. And that means that you don't need Adobe Lightroom Classic anymore. So if you wanted to follow another workflow entirely, let's say you only want to use Affinity Photo, you could do that and you wouldn't need Photoshop or Lightroom, but you just use the standalone stitcher to stitch and then Affinity Photo to color correct and edit out the tripod. This brings me to Affinity Photo and in case you hadn't noticed, Affinity is becoming the new Photoshop with the giant selling point of being a tiny little fraction of the price of Photoshop, which is a one-time payment, no subscription fees. Once you buy the software, you get to keep it forever. And not only that, but it's actually a really good photo editing software that also has a fantastic inbuilt 360 
photo editing mode. You set it up by going layer, live projection, equirectangular projection, and then from there you edit out the tripod and other imperfections using the in-painting brush. And then of course, there's also touch retouch. I made a video about it a while ago, but in case you didn't know, it's a fantastic photo editor that is designed specifically for editing things out of your shots and it also has an inbuilt 360 viewer, meaning you can move in all directions around your 360 photo and edit them out natively from that flat perspective, which doesn't distort things when you export. Touch Retouch is available on both desktop and on mobile, and it's a fantastic app with a great healing algorithm. So these potential workflows that I can see working are using Lightroom, then Affinity, using Lightroom, then Touch Retouch, or you could just use Affinity and do everything in there. However, I really do think Lightroom is worth the investment. It's a fantastic color correction tool. And in my personal opinion, it's leagues above Affinity Photo when it comes to color correction. I'm sure Affinity will get there one day, but it's not quite there yet. It is, however, a fantastic all around photo editing tool. I will also point out that Photoshop does have a paid plugin called Flexify 2 that allows you to distort 360 photos into any kind of perspective you like, meaning you could just distort distort the image so the tripod is in the middle of the shot, then edit it out and then move it back into place. However, Flexify 2 is a paid plugin and cost the same as Affinity Photo. So I can't really see why you would opt for this workflow over an entire photo editing solution unless you are a diehard Photoshop lover and you are going to use it until the day you die and not use anything else, which used to be me. I can admit I love Photoshop and I'm very sad that it's missing this feature and I probably still will use it for editing my YouTube thumbnails and other stuff. But yeah, in general, I'm definitely going to try my best to transition over to Lightroom, Affinity Photo and Touch Retouch. For now, I see this as the best and smoothest way of navigating this Photoshop dilemma because if you're like me and you've used Photoshop for years, especially for 360 photos, you know it's been deteriorating, it's only gonna get worse. So instead of just using an old version of Photoshop forever, I would suggest embracing the new workflows of Affinity Photo, Lightroom and Touch Retouch. Because of this massive workflow change, I've decided to add over an hour of brand new content to my Virtual Tour Pro course. If you are interested in learning the Lightroom and Affinity Photo workflows in more depth, you can join VTP down there. Now, I do think Photoshop will eventually bring back their 360 photo mode. When that will be, whether it's next month, next year, 20 years from now, is anyone's guess. So my advice would be embrace the workflow that works right now. And right now, the workflow I talked about in this video is the one that works. And if it doesn't work, then you can always go back to Photoshop, right? Excuse the long, messy hair, by the way. Right now, we're in a four month long lockdown here in Sydney, it's crazy. You can't go outside, you can't go get a haircut, everything's closed, but the pandemic is coming to an end, right? And when that happens, yeah, I'll get a haircut. So anyway, hope you're all doing well. Hey, if you have any alternative workflows that you've come across since Photoshop have done this thing, let me know down there. Would be curious to hear any other workflows that might work. I think I'm gonna wear a hat in the next video. That'll be a first. That's it from me. Happy 360ing and I'll see you later.